I'm Claire from Creative Theatre Way. I'm an independent demonstrator for Stampin' Up! in the UK. Thank you for joining me today. I've got a really special little make um, that I'm going to craft along with you today. Um, it's a book card. Uh, I've seen it on a fellow demonstrator's um, YouTube page, Bridget Keelin. So if you go and have a look at her, she does a really beautiful version of it and um, mine I've just scaled down a little bit in size and also to make it a little bit simpler for you to craft along with using your Stampin' Up! supplies. Um, so this is it, it's basically an easel card so it's like that. Oh so you can see it's an easel card when you look at it sideways but the back section is made to look like a book and it's just propped up with this front piece here so you could use it for lots of different occasions i have decided to make a christmas version and the paper that i'm using i am just going to check for you because i think it's peaceful places but as soon as i say that i'm hesitating so let me check what the paper is. Although you use such a minimal amount. Peaceful place, yeah. Oh, I actually got it right. Okay, so I've used one of these, the 12 by 12 sheet I've just cut down into this piece to do the front version, the front page here. And the back is just the bark piece. I don't know if you can see. Um, but if you turn it over on the other side, it's got the trees. So it's a chance to use one of the, the shiny sides up. Um, and then it just folds flat. Now, it probably would be okay in the post, but it is slightly fatter than what a normal card would be. So it will fit in a standard size envelope. So I would make sure that the person you're giving it to, you can give it to them by hand rather than posting it um, but it's worth the extra ex effort it's a real really lovely little card to make so how do we make it so we need a few different pieces we need a card base um, which is basically an a4 sheet cut in half I'm not sure which the lights not that great in here today um, that we're going to score to make the easel card and then the pages of the book the back piece there's two pieces that are designer series paper, the very back piece and the very front piece. And then the pages in between, um, I've just done in white. So if I bring it back again, you can see the back piece is like that. There's three pages and then there's another piece for the front. So they're the sizes that you need for that. Um, what else do I need to tell you? I've also used one of the dies from the basic border dies from Stampin' Up! So you know this one that you get all these different ones in? Well, we're going to be using that die. And I think that's it. Really just a few different makes um, and then you can make it your own. So let's move those sizes out of the way and I will show you the pieces. So we're going to start with an A4 sheet of Whisper, a basic white card. Okay, and we're going to turn it onto the long side of the A4 and cut it at five and seven eighths. So basically you're just cutting an A4 sheet in half. And then we're going to turn it sideways again, which is now on the longest side, and score it at four and one eighth. So it gets scored at four and one eighth. And then we also score it at two and one sixteenth, which is just turning that one side in half again. Okay, and you will end up with this piece. So that is going to be folded in half to make your base card. So like you would with a normal base card and then folded again to make your easel. Okay, just like that. So if we put the easel bit to one side, the next thing you need to do is cut your rectangles. So that's my back piece, okay, and that is five and seven eighths by four and one eighth. Then I've got a rectangle of white 
that's five and five eighths by three and seven eighths. Another rectangle that's five and three eighths by three and five eighths. And the last piece of white is five and one eighth by three and three eighths. And then we do the front piece. So the front piece, I have got this piece ready, but obviously it's going to end up smaller than this. So what I want to do is have a bit of a seam. So roughly, if I think I'm going to chop this whole bottom piece off here because I don't need it and chop off the top piece or as fairly close to the top of the tree as you want, just so that you can see that it is a, a tree seam and just make this piece five by three and two eighths. And then what happens is you're left with a much smaller piece, but still has got a seam on it. Obviously, if you didn't want to chop up your paper that tiny, just get some white card and make your own seam. Um, that would be fairly easy to do as well. And that would just be the front of your card. So what happens when you've got all of your pieces, you're just gonna take them and fold them in half. So literally just fold it right on the edge and just make the pages of your book. So you're gonna do that on each piece, okay, each of these, including the back cover. Now, if you want it to be the right way round at the back, what I mean by that is when you put fold your card down you can't see the back but when it's standing up you can so I like to just make sure that my trees are going the right way so that whatever angle you look at this card it looks good so just make sure that your trees are the right way or actually you would do that when you're cutting the card wouldn't you it would be a bit late in this stage if you've just decided now okay so you're going to have lots of little folded pages you're going to have a little pile of those so I'm going to put those to one side apart from these two and just explain what you do with this border uh, die so this has got a curve on it now that it is slightly shaped it's more elongated this side than this side or that could just be an op optical illusion but what you're going to do is turn it over so that the opening is on one side and you are going to line up this die with the top of your piece of designer series paper and we're going to use some washi tape if i get one of my plates now, you can tell I craft a lot because my plates are so well used. So I am going to put that on there. I'm going to put this right across because it just fits across the middle of this plate. And I'm just going to position that in place on both sides. And then I will run that through your die cutting machine okay and then what you end up with and you want to do that top and bottom and then what you end up with is this piece with this shape that when you open out actually looks like a page and you do that on all of your pieces so you fold it over and die cut it double because when you open it up you will see stitching on both sides and that gives you a nice shape okay and that's just going to go like that this one is going to go like this this one is the next one and then remember that big piece that was like that and we cut it down it now still looks like a lovely seam only a much smaller version okay now i don't know if you noticed but on the other side of mine what i've done is i've put tape on the long side but on the first one I actually don't need tape down the whole piece so I'm just going to die cut the second piece that I've done and I will show you what I mean um, so that 
just going to stay with you could just bear with me for a moment because I did put too much tape on the first piece. So I'm just die cutting this piece again to show you. So you're left with this little sliver that comes off. Okay, but when you open that up, it's like that. And now with the bottom, I'm just going to do the same. But actually, this is a good thing to tell you. So on the bottom, you want it going the same way. But obviously, you can't see. You're lining up either edge here and here rather than this bit at the top. So when you did this one, you lined it up at the top there. But when you do the bottoms, you do the bottom corners, which with this washi tape on actually you can't see so I'm just going to take that off so you're lining it up just about there so the bottom of the die is in each corner okay and I'm just going to run that through the die cut machine again so I've done the bottom and the top Gently pull the washi tape off and you can see it's taken that piece off down the bottom. Okay, so move that out of the way. Let's open this one. So that now becomes our back piece. So on all of them, let's put it back together so I'm not confusing you. So on this one, the front page and the next three white pages you need to put some double sided tape on each side on the back piece the cover you are just putting it halfway so which is why i had to do mine again there's my little scissors oh dear. so i am just putting some tape there and then the opposite side I know this feels a bit fiddly and a bit too many high rise instructions but if you bear with me it will all become apparent when we start putting it together so let's make sure these are all in some sort of order so what I'm going to do now so on um, Bridget's Video. she had this really clever trick where she stitched her pages together um, which actually looked really effective but for all of those of us who have not got needle and cotton we're just into paper crafting I'm going to show you a way to do it that will just be gluing so what I've done just visually I've gone through and I am lining up my pages and then I've got a couple of paper clips and I'm just gonna hold those in place put those on on there and one there just hold it in place for a moment okay then I'm going to get my glue ready I'm going to make sure that my glue is coming out so let's have a little scrap of paper but I just want a thin line okay so it's coming out in a thin line I'm going to take one side off and where the join is I am just putting a thin line of glue just in the join okay just along there some glue actually come out it's really hard to see isn't it the shadow from my hand is not helping so that's got you really don't want very much at all because as soon as you've got loads of glue your pages will stick and then this one okay and that is going to go on there i'm just going to leave that for a minute or two 
just to make sure that it's just stuck in the middle. Okay, so let's move that out of the way. And then I'm going to bring my card base back in. Okay, now this is the bit that's going to go down. So obviously I've already scored that and it just wants to pop up, which is a good thing. I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to remove the double-sided tape either side and actually I'm going to put some in the middle as well just because it will hold my book in place and I'm just going to do it on the crease the same oh, just press that down oh, it doesn't want to stick now because I've got glue on my fingers instead okay and I'm going to stick that in place. So what I'm doing is making sure that it's straight here. Both sides. And making sure that it's in line. And then that will just stick like that. I'm going to pop those off. Like so. And that should be my easel part. And now I'm going to make the pages. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to give these a little bit of a hand. The other thing is you need to shape your pages. So I find this easier to do on it as I'm doing it. Okay, so I'm just going to shape these. You could do this piece before. Let's do that side. Because I don't want them too shaped. If that makes sense. So that's one side done. I'm going to spin it round and I'm going to do this side. Start from the back. Oh, hi Amber. Sorry, my little kittens who are not so little anymore. They're now a year. Where has that time gone? I've realised that I'm videoing and are now in the room. <laughs> okay, so I've just gently done that with my bone folder. Okay, and then what happens is if you start at the back piece, take your double sided tape off and just shape your page. So I'm just sort of bringing it up a little bit and just folding it down okay so it's just got a little bit of a curve there and but you're gonna have to get down darling because you're in the way come on this way come down this way this way thank you okay so like i was saying that's the first page not too much of a of a bend is that the right word Okay, next I'm going to do the next one. So that's going to go there. And then that's got also a little bit of a bend. Then the next one. Okay, so that's just going to come in again slightly to give that curve. Now I'm hoping that you can see this because the video, the light in the room is not that great. But if I contrast it that side to that side, you can see that it already looks like a book there. So I'm just going to go back and do this side. So one at a time. So I move it in ever so slightly and then just push, push down on the edge. And then the next one. Move it in slightly, push down just on the edge because that's where the double sided is. And then the next one. And then the last one will be like so. And that just gives that really nice pages to a book effect. And effectively, that's your back done. Um, now, how do we get it to stand up? 
well what I did is I used some of the same designer series paper it was I think it was let's have a look it was about two inches yes so I cut a two inch piece by four and one eighth of white and this then die cut it with the same shape along the edge just to continue the theme and then what I'm going to do is overlay it here with the white um, just so that this is the background piece so I'm going to put some glue on there on the white piece just near this side because I know that I'm going to trim it up a bit okay so that is just going to go somewhere around there and just make sure that these lines these two edges are in line okay then I'm going to flip it over and just trim that off so I'll just trim that little edge off just about there to straighten that up And put some dimensionals on the back of there because you need it to stand up. So, oh, new pack for dimensionals. Don't you just love that? Starting a new pack. So you can put as many or as least as you want. I think that's probably about right. Just all over it. We are nearly there. Don't you just love it already? I can see lots of uses for this card. So let's move that out of the way. That is going to go uh, oh, along there. Okay, and that's just enough that that will stand up like that. Um, if I bring back my original one, so you can see it's exactly the same. The only difference is I've added some extra detail on my front page. So I die cut some Christmas trees. These are actually from last year's set in the pines. Um, and I've just trimmed them to fit. And then the sentiment that I've used is here. And that is from this year. That's from Christmas to Remember stamp set. Just felt like you needed a nice bold Christmas sentiment along there. So I've used Merry Christmas. But that is it. So I hope you've enjoyed the craft along today and that it's not too complicated for you. I like to show you how to do things in a simpler way using your Stampin' Up! products. Um, if you liked watching my video, subscribe. Um, I'd really love to see your makes. Just, just send them to me at createdtheoddsway at gmail.com or, or just email me for a crafty chat. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye.